I recently posted a video that really struck a chord with retro enthusiasts. The one where I swapped a tired mechanical hard drive in one of my vintage machines for an IDE to SD adapter. The video did really well, but the comments were eye-opening. A lot of you basically said it's a cool idea, but SD cards, nope, not reliable. Personally, I've only ever had one SD card die on me. A GoPro dashcam card that survived my twice daily motorbike rides for nearly three years, before finally giving up. But many of you have shared stories of sudden data loss, corruption and general distrust. And fair enough. These cards are fun for tinkering, but not exactly enterprise grade storage. But the feedback got me thinking. Is there a better option for our old systems that doesn't rely on the humble SD card? Well my friends, today we're diving into another budget friendly upgrade that might just save your vintage computer. And yes, it's around a tenner. Actually it's about 20 quid if you want to install it on the desktop, but we'll skip over that. A tenner sounds much more wallet friendly. We're going to be taking a look at an IDE to MSATA adapter, plus a 2.5 to 3.5 mounting adapter for desktop installs. A tiny SSD in your retro rig? Let's see what we can do, right after a quick message from our sponsor, PCBWay. A big thank you to PCBWay as always for continuing to support our channel. If you've got a project on the go, they make getting PCBs made really straightforward, but that's just the start. They also do 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding if you want to take things further. It's all quick, affordable, and surprisingly easy. I've personally used their 3D printing services, and honestly, it's fantastic. You can choose from a huge range of materials, and the quality is seriously impressive. So if you're ready to take your project to the next level, head over to PCBWay using the link in the description for $5 off your first order. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for helping creators and engineers everywhere turn their ideas into reality. So what is this adapter anyway? Well, an MSATA to IDE adapter is a clever bridge or converter that lets a modern solid state drive plug straight into an old IDE interface, giving vintage hardware a fast, silent upgrade it was never designed for. These are cheap devices and can breathe new life into your vintage machine but don't expect them to blow you away with their performance, they're still limited to the slow bus speeds, somewhere between 8.3 megabytes up to a blistering 133 with Ultra ATA 133, although vintage systems rarely hit these numbers due to chipset, CPU and cable quality overheads. But if you're not going to be maxing out the SSD's bandwidth, then what's the point? Well, an SSD eliminates seek times, so vintage machines feel instantly snappier, booting faster, loading apps quicker and reacting immediately instead of waiting for the mechanical drive to catch up. On old hardware, the lack of latency often matters more than raw transfer speed, and don't forget those mechanical drives are becoming rare and thus prices are increasing. I picked up this 32GB Lighton SSD for £8.48. The small capacities these days means you can pick these up for peanuts. The SSD simply slides into the adapter and then is held in place with two screws. The top case is fitted and then held in place with six super tiny screws, which are all supplied and that's pretty much it. For laptops, you simply whip out the old drive and put this one in its place. It's an upgrade that takes less than five minutes to complete and it's the kind of quick fix my brain thrives on. It's rapidly becoming my go-to when I'm replacing discs in my vintage systems. When it comes to support, I haven't yet found a machine that it won't work on and I've done this on both Macs and PCs with the one exception of my digital Starion 917, but that's because of the lousy IDE controller. And as for reliability, well I've not had one fail yet either, and I've swapped over about seven now. Let's do a real world speed test between spinning rust and my new SSD. We'll use two machines of around the same era, give or take a year. The one on the left is my 400 MHz PowerBook G4 and the one on the right is the 300 MHz iBook G3 with a farty speaker. Now you might think that the G4 would win because, you know, it's a G4. But actually they both have the same IDE bus, an ATA33. They're both 40 pin laptop drives and they both have the same theoretical maximum of 33 megabytes a second read. However, it's not just about the IDE bus. The G4 has a significantly faster system bus and faster RAM but I don't have another titanium PowerBook G4 to hand, so this will have to do. They're also running slightly different versions of macOS Classic. The iBook G3 is running 8.6 from a system restore CD, whereas the PowerBook G4 is running macOS 9.2.2. Well, it's the best I can do, and we're not LTT Labs here after all. I started the timer, and then started the machines as close to the 5 second mark as I could. 
So with that in mind, the G4 took 50 seconds exactly, and then I stopped the timer at 1 minute 15 seconds for the iBook, meaning the iBook took 1 minute 10 seconds or 20 seconds longer than the PowerBook G4. Whilst the SSD is a little faster on boot, it's not just here where you're going to notice the difference. Applications will launch quicker and copying files backwards and forwards should receive a noticeable increase in speed. Let's run another benchmark, opening up Microsoft Word 98 and seeing how long it will take. We'll then open up iTunes, which has the same library on both machines. Now the G4 is running iTunes 2.0.4, whereas the iBook is running 1.1, as iTunes didn't officially support macOS 8.6, so I've had to hack this install. Word opens almost instantly, and it doesn't even open that quick on modern hardware. But the iBook here for some reason is struggling. I'm pretty sure it's usually a bit quicker than this. Next is iTunes, and it's a similar experience as before. On the PowerBook it's instant, whereas the iBook has to think about it for a bit. Although once the app has launched, the performance is almost identical. Perhaps flicking through different MP3s is quicker on the PowerBook, but I can't say that I've noticed. The one final thing to note is how quiet SSDs make these old machines. In the modern world that we live in, SSDs are as ubiquitous as mechanical hard drives used to be back in the day. And it's funny that we've got so used to not hearing the clicking and whirring of these hard drives. And that's one of the potential downsides I can see for purists. Purists swear by one-to-one -one machines, where every chip, the speed, and every little quirk was exactly as it was back in the day. However, I'm not one of these people, and I'm glad that these modern replacements are around for people like me to extend the lives of their vintage machines. So that's laptops sorted, but what about desktop computers? Is there any way we can utilise a solution for these too? Yes, absolutely. And there are two ways that spring to mind. The first is to use a simple 2.5 to 3.5 inch cable adapter. And the second way, which I'm going to show you, that I mentioned earlier. The problem with laptop drives is mounting them. Whereas this solution not only converts from 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch, but it also has a nice tidy place to mount the drive. Now unfortunately, this adapter and the MSATA adapter don't play nice with each other. The flush mounted connector in the middle of the card is a little too low. It fits normal hard drives perfectly, but my adapter is just a little bit too high. I won't be using this in a machine that will be moved frequently, so I'm happy for it to stick up at this odd angle. I mean, the connectors are solid, just, you know, don't look inside your computer at it. I've temporarily mounted it on top of an anti-static bag to prevent any shorts on top of the existing hard drive inside my blue and white G3. We'll boot from a CD and initialise the drive. Initialisation takes a minute or two, so we'll come back when it's finished and start a macOS 9 install. This should hopefully be nice and quick. Well my friends, the retro gods today must be angry, as the desktop adapter seems to have died. I tried it on my purpose-built BOS machine, B Beige, as well as my other Pentium 2 PC, and neither can see the drive. I even took my Firewire DVD burner to pieces to use the Firewire to IDE bridge, but again the drive won't show up on either my Blue and White G3 or my PowerBook. So, 0 out of 5 stars would not recommend. I like the idea though, I guess I just need to raise a return request with eBay now. Oh joy. Perhaps I'll do a follow up video in future if I go for a replacement rather than a refund. All in all, MSATA to ID adapters work wonderfully on vintage machines, and they breathe new life into them, and they're easy on the wallet. As long as you don't have a dodgy IDE controller. Yes deck PC, I'm looking at you. I'd highly recommend one, and if storage longevity is what you're worried about, this setup should put those concerns to rest, while still giving you the speed and responsiveness upgrade that these machines really benefit from. Luckily, swapping out the drive in the PowerBook G4 was nice and easy. There are 9 screws on the bottom of the machine that you have to unscrew, and after you remove the bottom cover you have immediate access to the drive. The iBook on the other hand requires almost complete disassembly. I've done it once before and decided never again, so I'll stick with the mechanical drive until it fails. I have purchased a desktop SATA to IDE bridge, to try and install a SATA SSD into my blue and white G3, but it's being a bit picky about what it will and won't see. I'll have to have a look another time. Anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.